The first written report of a Bigfoot came from Alberta, Canada by a man named David Thompson in 1811. Then there would be nothing. It would take over a hundred years of no reported sightings when finally in 1924, while camping alone on Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Albert Osman made an absolutely shocking claim. His reports claim that he was kidnapped by a Bigfoot, taken away to where it lived and was met by a family of multiple Bigfoots. Other claims were that the creature he saw was extremely large, standing anywhere from 7 to 10 feet tall, and alluding to its name, had very big feet. Well, it's, uh, there was four of them, because I had no scale or any rules for measurement, but he was at least 8 feet tall. After this time, it wouldn't be long before tracks were increasingly reported and for the past 70 years, people from across the continent have been finding tracks believed to be left by Bigfoot. The footprints of the creature are measured to be up to an incredible 2 feet long and 8 inches wide. This is over 2 times the size of an average human footprint. These tracks left behind by what many believe is Bigfoot have been a large staple to the creature for decades and in the 1960s, Dr. Grover Krantz of Washington State University, upon examining casts of footprints, found extremely strong evidence to validate believers. This is an example of one footprint, this is a plaster cast, which shows a crippled individual. The foot was twisted and two bulges appear, calloused structures on the outside edge of the foot. If this was faked, the person doing it had to be an absolute expert in human anatomy. This meant that there were only two possibilities. That there really was an injured, upright walking primate wandering the wild of North America that had left this particular footprint, or that an artist with extensive expertise in the anatomy of primates created a fake cast. Dr. Krantz was one of the few scientists to research the Bigfoot and even expressed a strong belief in the creature's existence. Maybe the most enticing evidence for the existence of Bigfoot being real is the abundance of witnesses. The mysterious creature has been witnessed by roughly 3,500 people stretching all across North America in just the last 95 years alone. While it is estimated that up to 95% of these reports have been hoaxes or people falsely identifying known species such as bears, there have been thousands of credible sources reporting sightings and encounters across the continent for hundreds of years. Due to the vast amount of sightings, there are far too many witnesses for Bigfoot to just simply not exist. The opposing argument, however, is that Bigfoot has been much less of a mystery than it has been a cultural phenomenon, fueled often by misidentifying known animals as well as falsified and fabricated evidence being taken as true evidence. Part of a larger issue with the sightings may be their locations. Many of the sightings across the continent seem to indicate that the species inhabits areas largely populated by humans, meaning these are areas that in large part have been thoroughly researched and explored. Due to the largely populated areas, the odds of such a large creature never having been captured or even the remains of a deceased Bigfoot being found are seemingly low. This may suggest that the animal is either incredibly intelligent and elusive, doesn't exist at all, or may have a higher power that we simply aren't capable of comprehending. The reasoning behind explorers never having found a Bigfoot's remains may be partly attributed to the belief that Bigfoots, much like humans, bury their dead. The truth is, researchers continue to discover and identify new species annually. These discoveries are often by happenstance, and believers of the Bigfoot feel that it is only a matter of time before Bigfoot is captured. New video footage of Bigfoot encounters are published every year, and while many have been easily debunked as hoaxes, there are many that continue to remain a mystery. The most famous footage of Bigfoot is arguably the Patterson-Gimlin film of 1967, widely regarded by believers as being among the strongest pieces of evidence towards Bigfoot's existence. 
Filmed by Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin, the footage shockingly captured a Sasquatch walking upright in a remote mountainous region of Northern California. Since its release, the film has been studied by various experts and scientists who have, through scientific methods, estimated that the Bigfoot captured by Patterson was about 78 feet tall. Even more interesting is that the step length the creature was taking are estimated to have been about 47 inches, an increase to upwards of 65 inches as the animal became aware of the two men filming it. For comparison, the average human step length, on the other hand, is only about 30 inches. While multiple people have confessed to having been the man dressed in the costume, their stories contradict each other and are often, ironically, considered to be hoaxes themselves. The fact remains though that the costume has never been brought forward or recreated and while creating the costume would seemingly be simple, the video appears to show a primate with shorter legs and longer arms than that of a human. A belief by critics though is that if the video is true and Bigfoots really are walking about in the open, in today's digital world of smartphones, why has it been so difficult to find new video evidence recorded in a high definition format? One theory suggests that the Patterson film may have captured one of the last Bigfoots alive and that they have since gone extinct. As it, uh, as I walked across the sand floor, I was able to get uh, uh, some fairly good footage of it. It turned uh, a couple of times and looked at us, and as it, uh, as it turned, uh, uh, it seemed to give me the impression that it didn't want uh, anything to do with it. It didn't run. It didn't uh, act scared, but yet it acted very of us. Bigfoot is known around the world and has over 15 different names. The Swamp Monster, Yowie, Sasquatch, and Yeti are just a few. This in itself may point towards the possibility for the existence of Bigfoot. While the name may change, people located in various geographical locations around the world somehow have strikingly similar descriptions of Bigfoot sightings. This in itself is interesting as it could mean that it may not all just be a phenomenon. Granted, this is likely in large part due to the widespread phenomenon of the creature through television shows, social media, and the internet in general. However, further evidence for the existence of Bigfoot may lie in the past. There are a multitude of indigenous tribes across all of North America and across the globe who have long told historic stories of a large hairy figure that behaved much like a man. These creatures were often referred to as a non-human people of the wild, and their historic depictions and descriptions of the creature show a striking resemblance to the reports of Bigfoot even today. Maybe even more alluring is the fact that there were multiple tribes spread across many different regions of North America who had their own stories forming their own distinct name for the creature, suggesting that the stories derive from separate occurrences and sightings by tribes who often had little to no contact in a time where social media and the internet did not exist. These are the Ural Mountains, where in 1959, a group of nine hikers set out on a two-week-long expedition across this forest-covered region of the Soviet Union. On February 1st, the group reached a point known as Dead Mountain, where they set up camp and while many were highly experienced hikers, they would never return. These images show some of their last moments. It would be weeks before their tent was found, with no bodies inside, and despite the bitter cold, their boots were still inside, and strangely, the tent had been slashed open from the inside facing the forest. Some believe that they were lookout holes to something lurking in the forest. A nearby tree showed damage, with broken branches 15 feet up, as though someone may have tried to climb the tree, possibly to hide or escape. When the first two bodies were finally found, they were found nearly a mile away, severely underdressed in just their underwear, socks, and light shirts. Three more bodies were found shortly after, all face down between the tent and the woods. Two months later, nearly half a mile away, the last four bodies were found, bundled up as though they may have been hiding. 
Three of the nine hikers suffered severe injuries deemed to be impossible to have been sustained from a human. One had a broken nose, two had multiple fractured ribs and suffered severe internal bleeding, but most shocking was that one of the women had a missing tongue and two others had missing eyes. While it was never found what happened, the investigation deemed that the cause of death for the hikers was quote, an unknown compelling force which the hikers were unable to overcome, end quote. While not included in the official case notes, investigators claim that they have found a set of footprints nearly twice the size of an average human's at the scene. This mystery would spark many theories, one of which includes the Russian Bigfoot, the Yeti. To support this theory, the Ural Mountains are home to an indigenous tribe, the Mansi, who have survived this harsh climate for hundreds of years, and like many other indigenous tribes around the world, they have many historical stories of a forest giant said to be 6 to 9 feet tall who roams the forest. The Russian Yeti has been characterized by many different cultures as a large, hairy, muscular, upright walking primate, and since the 1970s, over 5,000 sightings have been reported in this region alone. What happened in the Ural Mountains in 1959, and whether it truly was a Yeti that killed those nine hikers, may have become a mystery within a mystery.